Hello everybody and welcome once again to On The Run and I'm coming at you today from the City of Churches. Where could that be? Tell you on the other side. Run. Yes, the City of Churches, of course that is Adelaide. Most Australians would know that. Not so named because there are lots of churches, but so named because there are lots of denominations of churches. And Adelaide has had long had a history of religious freedom. There is your trivia for the week. Now, I apologise. The light, I've got a light directly above me. The lighting setup's not so great, but um, you're, not, you're certainly not here to see me. You're here to get the news of the week for gaming and I'm going to give it to you. Uh, I had an interesting day today, flew over from Melbourne this morning, got a, a full tour of Sky City Casino in Adelaide, which was most interesting, and their lovely new hotel EOS, uh, EOS which opened, I think, uh, 2020 or 2021. Forgive me for not knowing that off the top of my head. Uh, they've got a hundred and something rooms, but very, very nice. Saw their uh, presidential suite, so to speak, it's actually got a different name, which I've forgotten right now. <clears throat> and that overlooked uh, the uh, sporting precinct of Adelaide. Level, very, very lovely. But look, let's get into the news of the week. Uh, and let's start as we usually do in Macau. And JP Morgan came out this week and said that GGR and Macau was quite steady now at 67 million per day. Uh, US, that is, of course. And if you multiply that by 30 you will get 2.01 billion. Very nice round number, basically 2 billion. In other words, a run rate of US 24 billion per year uh, with basically no VIP or no external VIP anyway. So Macau, is, as we've been saying for a long time, is certainly back. And that can be demonstrated by the figures that came out this week. Uh, Win uh, Win Resorts reported its uh, uh, Q2 uh, numbers and the EBITDA R with the R on the end, earnings before income tax, earnings before interest, taxation, uh, depreciation, amortization, and rent. Uh, the adjusted property EBITDA uh, was 246 million, which is 58% higher uh, quarter on quarter, sequentially from the previous quarter, and uh, Palace. Adjusted property EBITDA 157 million and the Peninsula property uh, 90 million. So great result there. And moving on to the next win story we had, which was from the uh, the earnings call. Uh, Craig Billings, of course, the CEO of Win Resorts, uh, in the second quarter earnings call on Thursday morning, our time here in Asia, uh, Wednesday evening for him said the mass table drop for Q2 was 4% up on 2019. But the the big news was that it was 120% of pre-COVID levels for July. He said he's already had the July numbers and wow, um, 20% up on 2019. So that's the first time we've heard of a number being up on COVID levels. So we're really getting into recovery now. Yeah, continuing in Macau, Galaxy announced this week that Andaz, their new hotel above the Galaxy International Convention Center, would open on the 15th of September. Um, this will be the largest Andaz in the world with over 700 rooms. And it's basically a mice hotel. Um, I've seen it. Galaxy have already given me a tour uh, some time ago to go through it. It's lovely, very, very nice hotel. And uh, if you're in Macau for a mice event, you will not have to leave the building because it is directly above the GICC. So that is fantastic. And that is now their, um, what is it? Their sixth hotel after Galaxy Macau, Banyan Tree, uh, Akura, JW Marriott, and Ritz Carlton. So sixth one is Andaz. And of course, the seventh one will be Raffles. And then we'll have the phase four hotels. So, uh, that will come at some point in the future as well. So congratulations to uh, Galaxy. Still with Macau News, um, the government announced this uh, week that there would be major airport expansion plans starting 
uh, next year. It will start in the second half of 2024. Expected completion in 2029, and there's, they're going to build more remote gates, more taxiways, and this will increase the passenger capacity uh, from 10 million per year to 13 million per year. Don't really think that's much of an increase uh, for all that work, but anyway, that's Macau for you. And they're also going to build um, some connections to the port, uh, the Hongqing port, and also the bridge, the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge. Uh, still with Macau travel and immigration stories, the Macau Iris. Uh, technology border trial has reached its second phase. Yes, this is a little uh, dystopian, if you like, a little from some from the future. We are working now in using Iris technology to clear the border. Um, there are 500 such clearance devices on trial in Macau right now at six uh, border control points, and this would mean if this came in eventually. This would mean no physical ID cards. We would simply use the iris to identify who you are. And this has been used in Singapore uh, and it has reduced clearance times at international borders to 20 seconds, which is something that Macau would be very, very interested in because obviously we have huge numbers of people coming in and going out of Macau every day, probably an average of around 80,000 a day now. So that is very interesting indeed and very futuristic. Okay, enough of Macau, let's go over to the Philippines. Um, the Philippines second quarter um, GGR across the board, the whole country has fallen by 2.2% small fall quarter on quarter to US 1.22 billion. So this sort of indicates perhaps that they're getting now to post COVID um, stability. Of course, it's still up uh, dramatically on 2022 numbers, uh, which it's up 28.3%. And the entire first half GGR for the whole country now is 2.42 billion. Just a smidgen under that 2.5 we're looking for because we're hoping the Philippines can be a $5 billion market, which would mean one and a quarter billion per quarter, of course, two and a half billion per half. So let's see if they can hit 5 billion. I suspect the second half of the year, the so-called Burr months, as they say in the Philippines, so what a Burr month, September, October, November, um, you would expect the GGR to perhaps to be a little higher in those months. So I think they're on track for their 5 billion. Um, still in the Philippines, uh, the number one IR company in the Philippines, I think I can say that without any hesitation, are Bloomberry. Uh, their Q2 profit was up 13% to uh, US 60 million. That's their bottom line net uh, profit. Not None of this adjusted EBITDA or EBITDA or, or, or anything like that for them. Uh, we just go straight to net income and it's 60 million for the quarter. So that is great. Um, for them, uh, this is up 92% year on year. It's up 13% quarter on quarter. Um, the GGR number they reported was 268 million. So their bottom line net profit ratio is almost 25%. Wow, that's very good. Very good, isn't it? Uh, the non-gaming revenue was 34 million. So that represents about 11%. So congratulations once again to Solaire and to Bloomberry. They're doing a fantastic job over there. And I think they still, in my view, hold the number one position. Akata Manila is coming for them. But uh, I think Solaire, you still have to say, is clearly number one. So congratulations to Mr. Rizon and Mr. Arasi over there. Still with the Philippines, um, big announcement for us. Uh, the PADCOR chairman, Alejandro Tenko, will be keynote speaking at the IAG Academy Summit on September the 13th. That's really exciting for us. So please get yourself to the IAG Academy Summit on September 13 and 14. In fact, get there on September 12 because we're having the welcome drinks and a manila after dark on the evening of September 12 and of course we're having the IR awards on the evening of September 13 so that super September week is going to be fantastic and Chairman Tenko will be playing a role as 
keynote speaker on day one, and you might just find that he's playing uh, a role in a number of other events that week as well. So it's going to be a, a great week. Still in the Philippines, the anti-Pogo senator, uh, Sherwin Gatchalian, usually just known as Win Gatchalian, defends his family casino. So his father um, owns a casino. Uh, Win Gatchalian has uh, denied any direct involvement in the casino, which is, of course, the waterfront. I think everyone knows that. Um, and they're doing a 611 million US dollar uh, Manila Bay reclamation project at the moment to expand. And he's saying, well, I don't have any direct involvement in it. That belongs to my dad. And, um, you know, he's just somebody that's very, very anti-Pogo and has been really making the running of the anti-Pogo camp in the Philippines while his father and family own a land-based casino. Does that sound familiar? Somebody owning a land-based casino being very, very anti-eye gaming? Hmm, who could that be? I uh, think about a very, very large casino magnate connected to Sands. That might be a hint. Uh, who's sadly no longer with us, but when he was, he was very anti-eye gaming. Um, let's get over to Australia now, where I am now in um, Adelaide, and the point of consumption tax um, has bit hard into sports bet. So there's a lot of sports betting in Australia, a very big industry, and um, uh, this was normally the domain of the of the bookies and of Tab Tab Corp, but now sports bet, which is of course owned by the UK uh, company Flutter. Uh, has now taken over from Tab Corp to be the number one sports betting outlet uh, in Australia. And they reported that their, their first half of 23 revenue was down 2%, so pretty stable, at £601 million, because it's flutter uh, in the UK. So they report in pounds. Uh, so let's, call, let's put that into US dollars, 765 million US dollars. But their adjusted EBITDA was down 28% to 158 million pounds or 201 million US dollars. Um, so revenue down 2%, but bottom line, well, not exactly bottom line, but we'll call it bottom line, down 28%. And they're blaming this Australian point of consumption tax and increases in that tax across several Australian states. It is true that the point of consumption tax for sports betting has affected, uh, and racing, has affected uh, the profitability of sports betting operators in Australia. Actually, all gaming operators in Australia are getting their profitability affected right now with what's going on in Australia and the vehement anti-gambling sort of push that's going on. So let's see how all that plays out over time. Let's go up to Korea now, a place I haven't been for a while and I'm itching to get there, hoping to get there in the first half of next year. Uh, Jeju Dream Tower, owned by Lotte Tour, uh, their IR has had a fantastic July and has beat their record month ever by a whopping 76%. It's their biggest month ever, of course, 15.5 million US bottom line, uh, and they got 27,005, don't forget the five, 27,005 visitors in July. So congratulations to them. Now, just down the road, the Xinhua world has issued a profit warning, and uh, it's all doom and gloom down the road, so it's all fantastic at Dream Tower and all doom and gloom at Xinhua. Um, they have announced that it will be a, they've issued this profit warning and they've said that there will be at least a 40 million US loss in the first half of 2023. Uh, this is a Hong Kong listed company, so they have to issue the warning. So this property, uh, we've reported quite a bit about it over the years. It has four luxury hotels, 2000 rooms. Um, it has 5,500 square meters of gaming, several theme parks. Um, over 12,000 square meters of my space, big property. And they're blaming just about everything they can think of. They're blaming uh, pressure on room prices and occupancy due to intense competition. They're blaming locals traveling abroad instead of domestically now that they can because COVID is over. 
They're blaming a downturn in the property market. They're blaming increasing interest rates and they're blaming increasing OPEX due to inflation, especially in utilities, maintenance and employee benefits. Sounds to me like a lot of whinging. Um, yeah, they're blaming everything under the sun about why they're gonna make this loss. So uh, maybe they're blaming everything but the real reason. Not much in there about operations, just lots of excuses. Let's go now to a market which I've been talking about a little bit in the last few weeks, which is India and this kind of crazy 28% GST um, on gambling. How you can charge GST on gambling is beyond me, but they're trying to do it. Um, from the 1st of October, there will be a 28% GST on, de on gaming deposits. So when you cash in, you gotta pay another 28%. How can you possibly win? Obviously that's gonna ruin the industry. So India's GST council obviously doesn't understand gambling. And they've confirmed it's definitely gonna happen. It's gonna be on the total amount of chips purchased. Uh, this was announced on the 11th of July and the industry is obviously up in arms about it. And the GST council says they'll review it in six months to see how successful it is. Well, I can tell them right now before it even starts how successful it is, it's gonna be a disaster. So anyway, no one listens to us, so <laughs> let's see what happens in India. I suspect that it will probably be scrapped before it even starts somehow, but let's see, let's see. Um, over in the US now, Wynn Resorts, as in the parent company of Wynn Macau, Wynn Resorts has appointed uh, a Chinese guy, Paul Yu, to its board. This is quite an inspired decision. So he'll be an independent director from the 3rd of August, which is about a week ago. Um, this guy is obviously a man of some substance. He's lived and worked in Shanghai, New York, Hong Kong. He's worked in finance at JP Morgan, UBS, Peregrine, Bank of America. He has a hospitality background, hospitality finance background. Actually, he's also a member of the National Committee on US-China Relations, which is a US organization established in the 60s, if I'm not mistaken, that tries to encourage positive US-China relations. So this is a kind of inspired appointment, a little bit like the appointment of Wilfred Wong by Sheldon Adelson. Ah, maybe that's who I was talking about earlier. Uh, uh, you know, getting somebody Chinese onto the board because let's face it, Win Resorts that has a big subsidiary called Win Macau um, that has lots and lots of, it's, that is in China and has lots and lots of Chinese customers. So that's, that's a good move by Billings, by Craig Billings, uh, the CEO of, uh, Win Resorts. Um, supplier news, one more story. Supplier news, um, Light and Wonder, our friends at Light and Wonder, congratulations to them. They've had a ripping uh, Q2, excellent second quarter. Uh, revenue is up 20%, uh, mainly on machine sales and digital um, play, or their digital offerings. Uh, up 20% to 731 million in Q2 revenue. Uh, and they, that included a 41% increase in gaming machine sales. So Light and Wonder, they're doing something right. So congratulations to them. Um, well, that's it for this week. I'm shooting in my hotel room, obviously. And uh, I'll be here uh, just till Sunday. And then on Sunday night, I'm flying to Sydney for one day, just one day. I'll be in Sydney on Monday. I've got a bunch of meetings lined up for Sydney. And then I will be off on Monday night. I'm not going to AGE. Ben will be going to AGE. Um, I, AGE's not having a big role at AGE this year. And I will actually be flying up to Manila on Monday night. I'll be there by Tuesday morning on a secret assignment, which you will all know about in a few weeks time. That will be very, very interesting. So I'm sorry to be so cryptic, but sometimes you just have to be. Uh, so the run continues, Adelaide, Sydney, Manila. I'll be in Manila perhaps a week or so, and then back to home base in Macau, which I'm very much looking forward to. So that's it for me. Have a great weekend, and I will see you next time. Bye for now. Run.